Hi, my name is Ms. Keith Snow, and I'm a student at Iowa State University studying to be a teacher. Today, we are going to be learning about comparison. Does anyone know what the word compare means? No. To, yeah, go for it. Show similarities or differences between two items? Yep. So when we talk about comparison, um, we're going to look at two things. Um, and we're going to find out what's similar between them. We'll find all the characteristics that are the same. So let's think about apples and oranges. So what is something that's the same, that is similar between apples and oranges? They're both fruit. They're both fruit. Is there any other similarities? They grow on trees. They do grow on trees. They're both round. Mm -hmm. Anything else? They have skin. They do have skin. They also have seeds on the inside. Or um, sometimes they're sour, depending on what kind of apple you get. Um, so those, so when we say that we're comparing apples and oranges, we can say apples and oranges are both brown. They both have seeds on the inside. They both have skin. And those are the, the comparisons between those two. So um, let's try one more example. So how about dogs and cats? What are some characteristics of a cat? They have whiskers. They have whiskers. They have fur. Fur. Mm -hmm. They have tails. Yes. And four paws. And four legs. Yes. <laughs> Anything else? They're both animals. They are both animals. <laughs> um, they also generally they both come with their cats are usually like brown gray colored um, things like that. So um, what are some characteristics of dogs then? They have tails. They do have tails. They both have, they have fur. They have fur. Mm -hmm. And four legs. Yes. And big white noses. <laughs> yes. So, um, what are the, some of the things that are similar between cats and dogs? Tails and fur. Tails, fur. Four legs. <laughs> both animals. Animals, yeah. Um, great. So, today when we're going to be talking about comparison, we are going to be comparing two different stories. So, I'm going to hand out this handy little graphic organizer. I want you to write um, Little Red Riding Hood in one of the circles, and then I want you to write Lon Po Po in the other. If you don't know how to spell it, it's up at the top of the sheet. Great. So I'm going to read the stories, um, I'll set a little piece from each of the stories, and while I'm reading, I want you to listen and try to write down some of the details you remember while I'm reading them. I also have a copy if you want to read along. If it helps you to read along, you can, otherwise you can just listen. But we're gonna start with Little Red Riding Hood. Once upon a time, there was a little girl who lived with her mother in a cottage on the edge of a big forest. Whenever the little girl went outside to play, she wore a beautiful red cloak that her grandma made for her. It had a big red hood, so everyone called the little girl Little Red Riding Hood. One day, Little Red Riding Hood's mom asked if she could take a basket of food to grandma. Grandma isn't feeling well, mother explained, and I'm sure she'd love to see you. Grandma lived on the other side of the forest, so Mother drew a map on a piece of paper so that Little Red Riding Hood wouldn't get lost. And remember, don't talk to any strangers along the way, said Mother. Helping Little Red Riding Hood into her cloak, Little Red Riding Hood took the, uh, took the basket of food and skipped into the forest. On the way, Little Red Riding Hood saw some beautiful blue flowers. Grandma might like these, she thought, as she bent down to pick up pick a handful of the flowers, she didn't realize someone else was in the forest. Hello, little girl, said a deep, growling voice. Little Red Riding Hood jumped with fright. A big wolf peered out from behind one of the trees. Oh, hello, replied Little Red Riding Hood, smiling back at the wolf. She had already forgotten her mother's warning. Where are you going, growled the wolf. I'm visiting my sick grandma who lives on the other side of the forest, Little Red Riding Hood explained. Ah, what a kind girl you are, smiled the wolf, showing off his razor-sharp teeth. 
Just then, the wolf's tummy gave a loud, rumbly grumble. What was that? asked Little Red Riding Hood. Just some thunder over the hills, said the sneaky, hungry wolf as he ran away as fast as he could to Grandma's cottage. The hungry wolf peered through Grandma's window and saw the old lady in bed. With a loud howl, the wolf dashed into the cottage and gobbled up Grandma in one large gulp. Then the wolf put on Grandma's spare nightcap and glasses and clambered into her bed, pulled up the quilt to his, up to his chin, and now all he had to do was wait for Little Red Riding Hood to arrive. So if you want to write some that things down in your Little Red Riding Hood circle about Little Red Riding Hood, anything that you remember. of Little Red Riding Hood. So, once long ago, there was a woman who lived alone in the country with her three children, Shang, Tao, and Potsu. On the day of their grandmother's birthday, the good mother set off to see her, leaving the three children at home. Before she left, she said, be good while I'm away, my heart-loving children. I will not return tonight. Remember to close the door tight at sunset and latch it well. But an old wolf near the, lived nearby and saw the good mother leave. At dusk, disguised as an old woman, he came up to the house of the children and knocked on the door twice. Bang, bang. Shang, who was the eldest, said through the latch door, Who was it? My littlest, my little jewels, said the wolf. It is your grandmother, your popo. The wolf acts surprised to meet me. Oh, oh yeah, there's. Um, I have, why is the page on this? Hold on, pause it. 